Hi, in this video, we will look at Incoterms 2024, what they mean, their application and the benefits. So make sure to watch the full video if you are new exporters. We have got a lot to cover in today's video. So let's get started. So what are Incoterms? Who made them? Incoterms are referred to as international commercial terms. Incoterms define the risk and responsibility of a shipment between the seller and the buyer. Incoterms were developed by international chambers of commerce. Why do we use Incoterms? Incoterms hold universal meaning around the world. People use Incoterms to avoid misunderstandings in foreign trade contracts by clarifying the task, cause, and the risk. How to use Incoterms? If parties want Incoterms 2024 rules to apply to their contract, the safest way is to clearly mention it in the contract. For example, CIF India Incoterms 2024. ICC grouped the Incoterms 2024 into two categories. Number one, rules for any mode of transport. Number two, rules for sea and inland waterways transport. We have created an easy to understand chart that displays Incoterms 2024. The left side of the chart displays the different types of Incoterms, beginning from top to bottom. The top side of the chart displays the different obligations and charges and displays which are covered by the seller and which are covered by the buyer. Blue points to the seller and gray point to the buyer. So let's start with the first Inco term EXW, which means X-Works or X-Warehouse. In X-Works, the seller is only responsible for ensuring that the cargo is packed so it is ready for export and the goods can be collected from the location. The risk or liability for the goods transfers to the buyer. When the goods are available at the agreed upon place, the buyer bears all risks and costs once they collect the goods from the seller's location. By applying this rule, the buyer and the seller do not have to make an insurance contract. Now it's time for Inco term number two. FCA, which means free carrier. In FCA, seller is responsible for the export clearance and the delivery of goods to the carrier at the named place of delivery. The Inco terms 2024 FCA has two possible delivery locations. Number one, if the place of delivery is at the seller's premises, the seller must load the goods. Number two, if the delivery takes place in a different location, the seller is not responsible for unloading. When goods have been delivered by the seller to the selected location, the risk transfers to the buyer. Buyer is responsible for paying the price of goods and the transportation fees from the seller's place to the buyer's selected place. In FCA, it becomes the buyer's responsibility to determine if they would like to obtain an insurance policy. Moving right along to Incoterm number 3, CPT, also known as Carriage Paid 2. In CPT, the seller is responsible for clearing the goods for export and clearing goods to the named place of destination. With transportation fees, risk is transferred from the seller to the buyer as soon as the goods are delivered to the first carrier, even if there are multiple transportations. The seller is not responsible for damages if the buyer has not insured the products because the goods has already been delivered and transferred to the first carrier. 
Without further ado, let's start things off with input term number 4, CIP. CIP stands for Carriage and Insurance Paid To. In CIP, the seller is responsible for delivering the goods to the destination, the cost of international freight, and the insurance fees and charges. CIP is also very similar to CPT, except that with CIP, the seller is also responsible for arranging main carriage insurance. With this, let's dive right into input term number 5, DAP. DAP means delivered at place. Under the DAP, the seller is responsible for all costs and risks associated with the delivery of the goods to the final destination, usually the buyer's premises. Risk transfers from seller to buyer when the goods are available for unloading. The buyer is then responsible for unloading the goods at the end destination. In DAP, both parties are not obligated to make a contract of insurance, but it is recommended. With that, it's time for our sixth and term, DPU. DPU stands for Delivered at Place Unloaded. In DPU, the seller is responsible for all the cost and rates until the goods are delivered to name destination which is usually close to the buyer. DPU is the only income term rule that requires the seller to unload goods at the place of destination. Risk transfers from seller to buyer at the place of unloading. The buyer is responsible for import clearance procedures. Both parties are not obligated to obtain an insurance policy, but it is highly recommended. Moving right along to income term number 7, DDP, which means delivery duty paid. As per the shipping terms under DDP, the seller bears all costs and risks which are involved in delivering the goods to the selected place. It is also the only term where the seller is liable for import customs fees. Risk transfers from seller to buyer at the place of unloading. The buyer is then responsible for unloading the goods at the end destination. There is no obligation to insure the goods. The seller is not obligated to insure the goods for pre-carriage or main carriage. With that, we have completed our first category of input terms. Thank you for watching. Do stay connected with my channel where we will be discussing very soon about the next rule for input terms which is sea and inland waterways transport. If you have learned something new from today's video, Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel right now. Just click on the button below this video. And if you want exclusive import export training that I will share with my subscribers, do subscribe and like the channel.